Hi, I'm Sue. Thanks for joining me for today's Bible reading for January 16th. We're continuing the saga about Jacob and his sons in the famine in Egypt. If you haven't listened to the last couple of days, I suggest you go back and start up with them. Um, at least yesterday's, because I give a little synopsis at the beginning of yesterday's recording. Um, so I'm reading today Genesis 46 to 47 in the World English Bible, verse 1. Israel traveled with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices to the God of his father, Isaac. God spoke to Israel in the visions of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob. He said, here I am. He said, I am God, the God of your father. Don't be afraid to go down into Egypt, for there I will make of you a great nation. I will go down with you into Egypt. I will surely bring you up again. Joseph's hand will close your eyes. Wow. Y'all, this story is flooring me this time around. It it has very special meaning to me, and I'm just seeing this, you know, when you look at the scope of these people's lives and their relationship with God and how faithful God was, and, you know, after yesterday's events, and I'm sure Jacob had worried and stressed, and, you know, and then here God speaks to him yet again, reassuring him that he's with him, that he's, he's all these things that have happened were his doing. It's just amazing. And that this word that God keeps giving the family truly will come to pass. And when he makes this promise, he says, surely you will, sh I will surely bring you up again. That's a promise that they had to hold on to while they were in Egypt, knowing that we're not going to stay here forever after hundreds of years there, that God is going to bring us out. And they traditionally say 400 years, but a rabbi teacher of ours, um, rabbi means teacher but one of the rabbis said it actually wasn't that long there are some uh records that date it a much shorter time than that so i don't know um that would be interesting to look up the research on that though verse five jacob rose up from beersheba and the sons of israel carried jacob their father their little ones and their wives in the wagons which pharaoh had sent to carry him they took their livestock and their goods which they had gotten in the land of canaan and came into egypt Jacob and all his offspring with him, his sons, his sons' sons with him, his daughters and his sons' daughters, and he brought all his offspring with him into Egypt. These are the names of the children of Israel who came into Egypt. Jacob, his sons, Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, the sons of Reuben, Anak, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi, the sons of Simeon. Now, again, if you don't know, each of these sons of Jacob become the 12 tribes of Israel. And well, yeah, there's much more to that story, who the 12 tribes, where they settled and what's become of them over the uh, centuries. So I don't I don't know much of the sun. Some of these I probably am going to recognize. Yeah, I do. So as I always say, this these lists of genealogies get more interesting the more you read the Bible. So we started out with Reuben and now Simeon. It says uh, the sons of Simeon, Jemuel, Jamin, Oha, Jachin, Zohar, and Shaul the son of the Canaanite woman, the sons of Levi, who became the Levites, the priests, Gershon, Koath, Merari, the sons of Judah, who were the praisers, um, Ur, Onan, and Jesus came from the tribe of Judah, um, Onan, Shelah, Perez, and Zerah, but Ur and Onan died in the land of Canaan. The sons of Perez were Hezron and Harmuel, the sons of Issachar, Tola, Puva, Ayab, and Shimron, the sons of Zebulun, Sered, Elon, and Jalil. These are the sons of Leah, whom she bore to Jacob in Padan Aram with his daughter Dinah. All the souls of his sons and his daughters were 33. The sons of Gad, Ziphion, Hagi, Shuni, Esbon, Eri, Arodi, and Areli. The sons of Asher, Imna, Ishva, Ishvi, Bariah, and Sarah, their sister. The sons of Bariah, Heber, and Malkiel. These are the sons of Zilpah, whom Laban gave to Leah, his daughter, and she, these, she bore to Jacob even 16 souls. Wow. The sons of Rachel, Jacob's wife, Joseph and Benjamin. See, they were, they were the two born of Jacob and Rachel, who he loved, whom he loved, and the only two blood brothers, the same mother, father. To Joseph in the land of Egypt were born Manasseh and Ephraim whom Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, a priest of On, bore to him. The sons of Benjamin, Bela, Becker, Ashbel, Gera, Naaman, 
Ehi, Rosh, Mupin, Hoopin, and Ard. <laughs> These are the sons of Rachel who were born to Jacob. All the souls were 14. The son of Dan, Hushim. Oh, he only had one? I never noticed that before either. The sons of Naphtali, Jaziel, Guni, Jezer, and Shillem. These are the sons of Bela, whom Laban gave to Rachel, his daughter, and these she bore to Jacob. All the souls were seven. All the souls who came with Jacob into Egypt, who were his direct offspring, in addition to Jacob's sons' wives, all the souls were sixty-six. The sons of Joseph, who were born to him in Egypt, were two souls. All the souls of the house of Jacob, who came into Egypt, were seventy. Jacob sent Judah before him to Joseph to show the way before him to Goshen, and they came into the land of Goshen. Joseph prepared his chariot and went up to meet Israel, his father, in Goshen. He presented himself to him and fell on his neck and wept on his neck a good while. Israel said to Joseph, Now let me die, since I have seen your face that you are still alive. Joseph said to his brothers and to his father's house, I will go up and speak with Pharaoh and will tell him, My brothers and my father's house who were in the land of Canaan have come to me. These men are shepherds, for they have been keepers of livestock, and they have brought their flocks and their herds and all that they have. It will happen when Pharaoh summons you, and you will say, What is your occupation? That you will say, Your servants have been keepers of livestock from our youth even until now, both we and our fathers, that you may dwell in the land of Goshen, for every shepherd is an abomination to the Egyptians. So he wants them to live in Goshen, and he knows Pharaoh will stick them over there if he knows they're shepherds. Chapter 47, verse 1. Then Joseph went in and told Pharaoh and said, My father and my brothers with their flocks and their herds and all that they own have come out of the land of Canaan, and behold, they are in the land of Goshen. From among his brothers he took five men and presented them to Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to his brothers, What is your occupation? They said to Pharaoh, Your servants are shepherds, both we and our fathers. They also said to Pharaoh, We have come to live as foreigners in the land, for there is no pasture for your servants' flocks, for the famine is severe in the land of Canaan. Now therefore please let your servants dwell in the land of Goshen. Pharaoh spoke to Joseph, saying, Your father and your brothers have come to you. The land of Egypt is before you. Make your father and brothers dwell in the best of the land. Let them dwell in the land of Goshen. If you know any able men among them, put them in charge of my livestock. Joseph brought in Jacob his father and set him before Pharaoh, and Jacob blessed Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to Jacob, How old are you? Jacob said to Pharaoh, Excuse that noise. Had to shut the window. It's getting cold. Verse 9, Jacob said to Pharaoh, The years of my pilgrimage are 130 years. The days of the years of my life have been few and evil. They have not attained to the days of the years of the life of my fathers in their days of their pil pilgrimage. Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from the presence of Pharaoh. Well, that's interesting. 130 years, but he said they're few compared to his fathers. Joseph placed his father and his brothers and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt, in the best of the land, in the land of Ramses, as Pharaoh had commanded. Joseph provided his father, his brothers, and all of his father's household with bread, according to the sizes of their families. Speaking of Ramses, you know, there's been a slew of archaeological finds over the last few years that prove uh, stories in the Bible. And also... Um, the manuscripts that were found, such as in the Dead Sea Scrolls, amazing, amazing, amazing. I just saw one recently that um, it was some kind of an altar they found that goes way, way, way back. I forget which story it was uh, representative of. But anyway, so neat. Verse 13. There was no bread in all the land, for the famine was very severe, so that the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan fainted by reason of the famine. Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the grain which they bought. And Joseph, ah, let me go back. Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the grain which they bought. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. When the money was all spent in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came to Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in your presence? For our money fails. And by the way, if I find that article about the artifacts i'll try to post them on my community tab on um on youtube so they said basically we've given you everything we have for grain we have nothing left to give you you know why should we die because joseph egypt has bought up everything they sold their houses so to speak every the cars you know everything just so they could eat verse 17 they brought their livestock to Joseph, and Joseph gave them bread in exchange for the horses, and for the flocks, and for the herds, and for the donkeys, 
and he fed them with bread in exchange for all their livestock for that year. When that year was ended, they came to him the second year and said to him, We will not hide from my Lord how our money is all spent, and the herds of livestock are my Lord's. There is nothing left in the sight of my Lord but our bodies and our lands. Why should we die before your eyes, both we and our land? Buy us and our land for bread, and we and our land will be servants to Pharaoh. Give us seed that we may live and not die, and that the land won't be desolate. So Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh and every man of the Egyptians, sold his field because the famine was severe on them, and the land became Pharaoh's. As for the people, he moved them to the cities from one end of the border of Egypt, even to the other end of it. Only he didn't buy the land of the priests, for the priests had a portion from Pharaoh and ate their portion, which Pharaoh gave them. That is why they didn't sell their land. Then Joseph said to the people, Behold, we have brought you and your land today for Pharaoh. Behold, here is seed for you, and you shall sow the land. It will happen at the harvest that you shall give a fifth to Pharaoh, and four parts will be your own, for seed of the field, for your food, for them of your households, and for food for your little ones. So a fifth, wow, that's two tithes, right? Um, they said, you have saved our lives. Let us find favor in the sight of my Lord, and we will be Pharaoh's servants. Joseph made it a statute concerning the land of Egypt to this day. The Pharaoh should have the fifth. Only the land of the priests alone didn't become Pharaoh's. Israel lived in the land of Egypt and the land of Goshen, and they got themselves possessions therein and were fruitful and multiplied exceedingly. Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years. So the days of Jacob, the years of his life, were 147 years. The time came near that Israel must die. So he called his son Joseph and said to him, If now I have found favor in your sight, please put your hand under my thigh and deal kindly and truly with me. Please don't bury me in Egypt, but when I sleep with my fathers, you shall carry me out of Egypt and bury me in their burying place. Joseph said, I will do as you have said. Israel said, Swear to me, and he swore to him. Then Israel bowed himself on the bed's head. And that is the end of today's reading. So one more day of reading for the book of Genesis and then we'll go into Exodus and the story of Moses. Can't wait. So good. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.